All right, what does downtown Portland look like today? Well, in this video, I'm gonna walk around the different parts of downtown, show you what it looks like, so stay tuned to learn more. Hey, what's up everybody? This is Paul Clem coming to you from Portland, Oregon. If this is your first time to the channel, living in Oregon, make sure to hit the subscribe button, tap the little bell to get notified every time we drop a new video. People reach out to us all the time who are thinking about buying a home, selling a home in Portland, and we love to hear from you. So if that's you, give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email, or schedule a Zoom call in the description below of this video. However you decide to get a hold of us, we have your back when it comes to moving to Oregon. So uh, I am downtown Portland today, and you know, Portland's been in the news quite a bit in recent years um, for uh, some, some good, some bad. Uh, we're gonna walk around downtown, some of the different neighborhoods um, in the downtown area and show you what it's like today. Even if you're moving to Portland and you're you know, maybe not thinking about living in or near the city, you know, downtown Portland is a place that people go. People go to eat, walk around, hang out, go shopping, and it remains that to this day. So if you have any apprehension about moving to Portland, you think Portland maybe feels a little unsafe for whatever reason, uh, let's go check it out. So right now I'm walking past the federal courthouse downtown Portland, which uh, is probably um, primarily what you saw in the news a couple of years ago. Uh, there was a point in time where there was thousands of people here every night for uh, God, like three months at least. And uh, yeah, there were uh, setting fires and trying to break into this building and uh, it was pretty wild. But as you can see, uh, they have uh, a barricade now. Um, this park right here is where everybody was kind of set up shop, nice and quiet now. All right, so first we're checking out downtown Portland and there's a certain part of the city that is more or less considered to be downtown. On one hand, you could say downtown and that could kind of encompass some of the different um, neighborhoods or, or parts of downtown, like the Pearl District, for example. But I've always thought of downtown Portland as everything uh, south of uh, Burnside and west of the river. Um, so kind of this southwest pocket, that's where the big buildings are, that's where a lot of the businesses are. And there's not a lot of residential areas. There are some condo buildings, there is uh, some condo living. You know, there's probably a handful of, you know, 120 year old houses that are just standalone. Uh, but for the most part, what you're seeing down here where I'm at right now is uh, businesses, big buildings, but a lot of great restaurants too. Uh, there's the uh, Pioneer Square, um, you know, which is like, you know, Portland's living room is what they call it. Uh, there's Pioneer Place, which is a great mall uh, that has a couple different buildings, a movie theater. Um, and, and again, there's a ton of great bars and restaurants and things to do and, and places to hang out. So I think, you know, part of the intention of doing this video is you know to show you guys what downtown Portland is like again downtown specifically this first area we're looking at is not a place where a lot of people live but it is a place where a lot of people historically go you know spend an afternoon go hang out you know going downtown is a thing Another thing that's cool about downtown Portland, and you probably get this in a lot of metro areas, but Portland is 
right in the center. Downtown Portland is right in the center of the Portland metro area. So you have kind of suburbs and areas to the north, south, east, and west. So it, it's very accessible, you know, uh, kind of regardless of where you end up living. I know a lot of people aren't going to move to the Portland area and live, you know, quote unquote, in the city. Um, whether it be in a condo or uh, just across the river in southeast and northeast Portland. There's a lot of uh, kind of urban but more residential areas, kind of an urban uh, residential mix, um, which are really cool neighborhoods. And we're definitely going to do more videos checking out the southeast and northeast neighborhoods too. Uh, so if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel because we're going to do these vlogs in each neighborhood of Portland over time. Uh, but, you know, Portland is very centrally located. So, you know, people come here from, uh, you know, no matter if you live in Beaverton or all the way down to Wilsonville, um, way out in Gresham or up north in Vancouver, anywhere in between, Portland's easy to get to. favorite parts about downtown Portland is Waterfront Park and not just you know being able to go for a run walk you know ride a bike whatever whatever it may be um, in the summertime starting in uh, about May you have a lot of events throughout the summer so it starts with the Rose Festival um, which is kind of like the city fair you know there's Ferris wheels and um, you know carnival games and things like that all kinds of fun stuff but then you get into the bite of Oregon there's there's uh, the pride parade and pride fest um, we have the Blues Festival, and then toward the end of July, you have the Oregon Brewers Festival, which is, is the largest beer festival, I believe, in the world. Uh, maybe maybe not because of Oktoberfest, but at least in the country, um, it's it's awesome. And, you know, there's, there's events going on throughout the summer on the waterfront downtown Portland. There's concerts, there's all kinds of stuff to do. Um, and, you know, typically when you go to those events, you know, you come downtown a little early, uh, you know, you get some, some lunch, some dinner, you know, maybe after the event, go out, get some drinks, whatever it is, but um, you really can't beat summertime in downtown Portland. All right, so now we're looking at Old Town, Chinatown. Uh, Chinatown uh, is primarily on the northwest side, so just north of Burnside. Burnside is the main road that separates north and south. Um, it goes on the east side and the west side of the river. So it's kind of a main you know, artery uh, that separates um, you know, the quadrants, uh, or the, at least the north and the south side. Um, Old Town, Chinatown has really been hit hard um, in recent years. It's always been a little bit of a seedy area, uh, but I know like when I was in my early 20s, this was an area where I used to come out all the time, a lot of great bars and clubs and things like that. And, and that still does exist here. Um, so it's, it's not like it's, uh, you know, to totally abandoned or, you know, left to die or anything like that. But, um, you know, this is where a lot of like the, the soup kitchens are um, and the missions in Portland. And, you know, you do see a lot of tents and things like that on the, on the street, on the sidewalk. And, you know, for better or worse, um, it's, it's really kind of a rough area right now. Uh, but definitely, you know, um, has potential to turn over. Um, and hopefully, you know, the city starts doing some things um, about some of the issues here. But it's still really beautiful. Let's check it out. I used to live about a hundred yards from here 
and uh, as much as I could at least, or as often as I could, would get out and run on the waterfront um, or just go for a walk. It's an awesome place. Uh, this lower deck on the steel bridge um, connects you uh, to the east side, uh, so it's really easy to get across there. And then um, all along the east side here, there's uh, the East Bank Promenade, uh, you know, where you can uh, continue to run, bike, whatever it is. Ending our journey here today in Washington Park, which is just up above uh, the southwest side of downtown Portland. Up above uh, the northwest side is Forest Park, which is like, I think the biggest or largest uh, uh, kind of inner city park in the country. It's beautiful, tons of hiking trails. Um, here in Washington Park, it's a little more developed. You have some like paved pathways. The Washington Park Zoo is up on the other side of the hill. You have the Japanese gardens, you have the Rose Garden. Um, so there's a, you know, there, there's, there's a ton of like outdoor green space, you know, just kind of west of downtown, you know, as you go up the hill and get into the hills a little, <clears throat> whew, I'm a little winded, I just ran up a hill. Um, as you get up into the hills a little bit, you have these awesome parks. And I figured this would be a great spot for us to end our video. Um, I'm gonna recap uh, kind of what we looked at and uh, go through some of the footage that I got. Um, I was a little worried it would be too loud, you know, kind of walking out on the street. Um, surprised there was a, you know, a, a lot of people out and about today uh, for a Wednesday afternoon, but you know, it is springtime. The sun's coming out. People are looking to get downtown and get into some of these activities. So, um, so we started with uh, downtown Portland, uh, which again, as defined is, um, you know, at least in my opinion, is really kind of, uh, let's say, east of 405, which is like the beltway that runs kind of behind downtown. Um, so anything east of 405, west of the river, and then south of Burnside, um, you know, that's kind of like the traditional downtown where um, the, like the biggest buildings are. It's mostly a lot of businesses. There's a lot of great restaurants. There's some of the, you know, more fine dining you can get in the Portland metro area or in Portland itself is right downtown Portland. Not a lot of like clubs or like um, like a bar district necessarily. There, I, A lot of the bars, you know, are like restaurant bars, hotel bars, or you have some dive bars um, downtown Portland. Um, uh, again, there's also a mall, uh, Pioneer Place, which is great. Uh, there's Pioneer in your square which is a great place to spend some time um, you know and you know my impression of downtown right now um, is it's actually cleaned up quite a bit in the last um, maybe you know six to eight months um, felt awesome you know there again there was a lot of people out and about um, down you know right downtown Portland again you know it's really just kind of walking around shopping or again maybe going out to like some nicer restaurants um, but it's really not very residential. There is some Section 8 housing, there are some apartments, um, there are some condos as well, um, and there might be a couple of houses kind of smattered throughout um, that are like historic homes that you know couldn't be torn down, for example, you do see some of that. And um, you know those are gonna be like 100, 120 year old homes. Um, so downtown Portland uh, is, is great. And um, taking a step back to uh, you know, downtown, the city, there's there's a lot of kind of distinct neighborhoods or areas. Uh, and we're also not including in this video, the Lloyd District where you have kind of a, a lot of taller buildings um, and it's, it's very urban there, uh, as well as uh, the South Waterfront, which has really only developed in the last 20 years or so. Um, and that's very residential. Um, and then OHSU has some buildings there as well. That's where you see the big tram that goes up to the hospital. Um, it connects down there with South Waterfront. So South Waterfront is still uh, maybe a little bit um, under the radar uh, just because it's, it's still kind of developing. There's not like a, a real culture baked into it. Um, we'll talk about that at some point, but uh, moving on to the next area we looked at, which was Chinatown. Um, and Chinatown has changed a lot. Uh, it's always been a, a little bit, um, 
you know, of, of a seedier area. Um, you know, I, I know like when I was in my early 20s and if I was gonna go out downtown Portland, um, Chinatown was where most of kind of those bars and like, you know, younger clubs and things like that um, were at. Um, you know, there's also some restaurants, there's some Section 8 housing there as well. Um, there's not a ton of like condo living, it's not super residential. Um, there are some really cool old historic buildings because it's Old Town slash Chinatown. So um, you have like the Skidmore Fountain, um, you have quick easy access to the waterfront, to the steel bridge where you can walk across um, to the east side. Um, you know, and I would anticipate Chinatown to make a little bit of a comeback here in the coming years. But um, right now, you know, it's a place where probably not a lot of people are spending too much time. Uh, but then you have, you know, 10 blocks east of Chinatown, you get into the Pearl District, which is like, you know, probably the idyllic, like, you know, quintessential urban living. Um, it, it's, it's an area that uh, has uh, turned over quite a bit um, in the past 20 years, 30 years. Um, it was a very industrial area, a um, lot of loading docks and things like that, a lot of cool old buildings. Uh, but now it's very artsy, very hip. You know, there's a lot of restaurants, bars, nightlife, you know, you name it. I think if somebody was going downtown Portland, um, the Pearl District is most likely where they're gonna be spending a lot of their time because there is shopping and there is so much to do. Um, and the Pearl District is pretty residential. You have a really good mix of business and then like bars, restaurants, shops, things like that, and then a ton of condos. It is pricey though. Um, so, you know, the, the price per square foot, plus the HOAs that you're paying um, makes the Pearl District probably the most expensive real estate in the city of Portland on like a price per square footage basis. Uh, but there's some super nice condos and you get sweeping views of the river and, and downtown and everything. And the Pearl District, I mean, you know, if that's what you're looking for, if you're looking for true city living, I mean, the Pearl District is where you should be looking first for sure. Um, not a lot of houses, um, probably I would say no houses like standalone single family homes in the Pearl District. Um, but then you, you know, go, you know, kind of the next 10, 12, 15 blocks um, to the east, kind of further up the hill, and you get into Knob Hill or the Alphabet District. A lot of people just say 23rd, Northwest 23rd is kind of the, the main drag, the main strip, although Northwest 21st is also really cool um, and is very similar to 23rd, but a lot of people just call the area 23rd, but it's, or, or Northwest. Um, and this is probably the most unique area of, you know, kind of the greater downtown area of Portland. Um, it's, it's a very good mix of uh, kind of urban, residential. Um, the, the only other neighborhoods that are like this are on the east side of the river in southeast and northeast Portland. Um, and, you know, t 23rd, 21st, that area has a ton of old historic homes. A lot of them have been remodeled. Um, a lot of them have been sectioned off, you know, and they're either rentals or, um, you know, some of these big houses have been like converted into triplexes um, and they're owned as individual individual condos, for example. Um, but it, it's, it's a really good mix. I would say, you know, I, I, I said the Pearl District for like true urban living and that is true where you have taller buildings and really feel like you're in the city but as far as kind of a city urban neighborhood where it is really residential you can't beat Northwest 23rd. I lived there for a year. Um, it was awesome. It was just I was just a couple years after I graduated college so you know there's a lot of bars in the area a lot of things to do for, for young people and for older people too but um, I lived in like a six bedroom home with seven people and it was like a big fraternity house for a year. Um, and it was awesome, it was a great time. We were like a half block off 23rd, could walk to any restaurant, coffee shop, you know, anything you need is right there at your doorstep. Um, this is an area too where the price per square footage, the real estate is more on the expensive side, not to mention the property taxes are gonna be a little bit higher, which is generally the case being in Multnomah County. but. You have Wallace Park, where Chapman Elementary School is in Northwest. This is where uh, the Swifts come in, I think every September. Um, they come swooping into the smokestack uh, every evening, kind of like, you know, right at dusk. Um, and you get hundreds of people sitting up on the grass hill watching this. It's, it's really kind of a sight to see. Hopefully we can get um, some video footage of that, or at least a photo. I'll put that in this video. Um, but no, overall, Northwest, I mean, um, it, it's, it's, it's hard to... Uh, 
it's hard to ignore, um, you know, kind of how unique it is um, and, and relative to kind of downtown um, and everything that it offers. Uh, again, all the cool shops and and restaurants and everything. Um, and it's always really lively. I mean, you know, there's a lot of families walking around, you know, you see a ton of strollers, you see a lot of people out and about doing their thing. It's a great place to be. Um, and then the last place we looked at was Goose Hollow, which is back into the Southwest side, but just uh, behind downtown. So it's still kind of downtown, but it's it's mostly on that east side of uh, 405, Interstate 405, which cuts right through uh, downtown Portland. Um, and that's, that's another one that's a pretty good mix. Uh, it's actually mostly residential. Um, there are, you know, some businesses and some, some uh, office buildings and things like that, but a, a, a lot of apartments, and then you get a lot of these old historic homes. And some of the homes in Goose Hollow are enormous and you know they at least you know from the, the street view look to be in immaculate condition so if you want to be downtown a little more residential um, you know a, a lot of trees lining the streets things like that Northwest is a good option but Northwest also brings in a lot of people from outside of the city you know when they want to go downtown that's an area where they hang out Goose Hollow is a little more laid back a little more chill as far as kind of the vibe you're gonna get uh, around there um, I would say a lot of the single family homes in Goose Hollow are, you know, probably starting point is like 1.5. Um, you know, it, there are some apartments and condos as well. Uh, I, I would say probably on the condo side, a little more affordable than the Pearl District. So if you want to be downtown, uh, a little bit removed from the city, um, again, the Pearl District, you're really kind of in the city, but Goose Hollow is a, a little quieter, a little more laid back. Um, Lincoln High School is right there in Goose Hollow um, and they're they're renovating that whole building. That's pretty cool to see. Uh, you have the Mac Club, the Multnomah Athletic Club, uh, which is kind of, you know, kind of a little exclusive, uh, you know, gym, um, athletic club, uh, right there in Goose Hollow. But aside from that, you know, a couple bars, a couple restaurants, um, and you know, uh, it's great for walking around because it is so much, you know, less busy, uh, but it gets really hilly, especially once you start walking up the hill. So, um, you know, that is something to maybe keep in mind is that, you know, um, if, if you're considering an area like that, you know, you're, you're, you're going to be walking up and down a lot of hills or biking or, you know, how, however you, uh, prefer to get around. All right, so let's talk about downtown Portland really quick. Um, there are some distinct pockets or areas uh, of downtown Portland kind of being in the city. Um, and, and first and foremost being kind of the true downtown area uh, south of Burnside. Um, and east of 405. Then you have Chinatown and Old Town, which is just north of uh, Burnside, but a little bit closer to the river. Back behind Chinatown, um, you know, east, uh, kind of from about 10th up to maybe 15th or so, back up to 405 really is kind of the border, is uh, the Pearl District. Back on the further east on uh, on the northwest side, you have the Northwest or Alphabet District, Knob Hill goes by many names um, and then you have Goose Hollow which is back on the southwest side but kind of parallel with um, uh, with Northwest 23rd and, and those areas all right so if you're thinking about moving to the Portland area you know you may not want to live in the city you may not be considering living you know in downtown or close to downtown but if you're moving here you're obviously going to be spending time in the city um, you know really anywhere you would live in any suburb surrounding Portland um, you know downtown and and the different little pockets in the downtown area are going to be really accessible to you um, whether that's a 10 minute drive even a 30 minute drive you're going to be coming into the city so what does it look like you know portland's been in the news the last few years you know are there things that you need to be concerned about is it safe is there a lot to do um well downtown portland and these different neighborhoods these different downtown pockets um you know really offer something for everybody so i hope that was helpful and if so make sure to hit the like button on the video and hit the subscribe button tap the little bell to get notified every time we drop a new video because we're going to dig into these areas further we're going to look at the east side and some of the kind of more urban neighborhoods that portland has to offer um, and can't say it enough if you're if you're moving to Portland relocating here give us a call send us a text shoot us an email or schedule a zoom call in the description below um, however you decide to get a hold of us we would love to help you out appreciate you watching the video and we'll see you next time all right so I didn't uh, plan this very well um, there's only a couple gas stations downtown Portland 
and uh, I'm running out of gas and it just so happens, I don't know if you can see that, I uh, pretty much was forced to stop at the most expensive gas station probably in the state of Oregon. So uh, just throwing in a couple bucks so we can get home here. 